So welcome back to Unity and if you remember last time we spoke about how we could create uh, scriptal objects and that did not get too many views which is pretty depressing but I don't blame you guys either because that's not a very interesting topic to talk about. So this time I thought I'd bring you guys something rather interesting and attempt to create some kind of a working game with a moving character and maybe someone who can shoot. Right? So let's just dive right into it. So. In order for us to start building any kind of game, we need a map or some kind of grounds to move on. And where else to create a ground system but in the most trusty software that I know, MS Paint. Cool, awesome. So we need to create some kind of a ground block in order to create the level. So I just go ahead by using a square and we want to think of something very original, very very fancy so I was thinking maybe a square and maybe drawing some squiggly lines inside something like that oops that was a little off oh boy I haven't used paint in a while now so you can't blame me we'll create the square again and put in some kind of lines inside And let's just go with me brown here and a little bit of green. Well, that definitely doesn't look like any kind of popular game that I might have known of. Definitely not Minecraft. So let me just go ahead and import this into Unity. Well, and there we go. We have a dirt block right in Unity. Now I keep calling it a dirt block, not because I'm referring to any popular game, but because it's a completely original creation of mine. So I'm just going to go and drag it into the scene and that looks nice. Cool. So we'd want our dirt block to have a few properties, especially collider to make sure our hero or whoever we're going to control can actually stand on top of it. So let's go ahead and add component and let's go ahead and add a collider. So box collide 2D should do perfectly fine. And that's nice. That's good. All we have to do is go ahead and create a level, which I'm going to do, and in about a few seconds. I won't bore you guys with the details, so we'll just skip to when I've completed. Alright, so there we have it. So we've created some kind of a level, which is very, very basic. And if you're going to ask me why these dirt blocks are floating, that's because it's my game and I can do whatever the fuck I want. Okay, so moving on. Now, we'll need something to control, some kind of a character. And to create a character, we'll probably have to go back to paint. There we go, and let's just remove this. So, what would we want our character to look like? Let's see. Maybe something like... Maybe something like this. Well, don't ask me why he looks like a frog alien, but this is what it is. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and import this into Unity. And there we go. We have our player character right inside Unity. If you guys are wondering why I'm using paint and not something like Adobe Illustrator or some fancy other tool, it's because I'm a engineering student in India. Do you really think I'm going to pay money for software? I'll have to crack it, but yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do that sometime later. So there we go. We have a weird looking player character. And we'll need a name for it. Let's name it, um, name him Steve. Which is again completely original name not stolen from any video game whatsoever now steve of course will have to have some properties because if he doesn't well i'll just show you what happens he just floats in air like he just floats in air like some kind of painting so let's let's go ahead and give him i don't know let's give him a collider well let's not well let's not give him a collider to show you guys what a collider does let's give him physics right so let's go 2d and where is it 
rich body 2d this basically gonna allow physics to apply onto the character and when i play it it should fall if i'm not wrong there we go it falls right through now why is it falling right through is because obviously it doesn't have any colliders so it's not any kind of physical body it's it's a ghost and we're gonna go ahead and add a collider well if you're if you're thinking that I'm very smart in making the character square so I can just directly add a box collider 2d and not some kind of polygon yes yes I am a genius thank you so when we go in and play it he should just drop right down on the flow there we go awesome now we can start um, and move ahead towards the, towards the fun stuff where we get to interact with the character so in order to interact we'll have to create a C sharp script let's name it um, well I'm very sorry for the inconvenience my mic just fell off I have a very weird setup going on and uh, you, you guys probably won't have noticed because I've just probably skipped to this part but yeah so we'll just name it uh, character controller I don't even know if I'm spelling it right but who even cares from this at this point so let's open it up okay so let's let it load up and there we go we're gonna get rid of our basic comments which we don't need there we go so in order for us to start uh, making the body move we'll obviously need to find out whether the player has inputted the left or the right sticks right I mean by sticks I mean arrows I don't know why I'm talking about controller terms so I'll need a variable called movement and I'll have to get input from the user so let's just go with input and depending on what axis I've used the input towards and we can use the keyword horizontal which basically refers to the left and right arrow keys there we go cool now every time I click on these left or right arrow keys I want the guy to move and how I'm gonna do it is by using a little bit of movement I'm just gonna change the position right so to change position I just go with transform dot position and I'm gonna add onto a new oh, there we go a new vector which is gonna have three values which are namely movement and the rest is gonna be zero because we don't want movement in any other direction other than the x-axis and we're gonna multiply this by time to delta time which just makes it a lot more smoother 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 interesting and let's multiply this by movement speed so we can control how fast our character will be moving okay so I don't know why VS Code is acting funny, but I'll have to go ahead and create a... What? Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna have to go ahead and create a variable called movement speed before it starts complaining. Movement speed. And let's just initiate it to one. Looks about right to me. Now, if I go ahead and run this theoretically it should work let's see Is something wrong oh of course jeez my bad let's just go ahead and and let unity load up let this run okay fingers crossed if I press the right key it should move to the right perfect awesome now, Steve here is moving pretty slow. He clearly has to hit up the gym, so I'll just go ahead and make him a bloody ninja by giving him some insane amount of movement speed and then just see what happens. That's just. Let's just see what happens. I'm just gonna slightly tap the left key. I mean, the right key. Um. Interesting. So. Let's go ahead and give him more manageable movement speed, what do you guys think? Let's just go with 10. And let's play this up. He should move it. Oh, there we go. I, I, I think that's a pretty decent way to move about. Awesome. Now let's um, help him jump. So in order to make him jump, we'll need to add some kind of a force, right? 
So to add a force, of course, we'll need a few variables. First of all, we'll just start up with a jump force because that's important. We want to know how high the guy's going to jump, right? Now, moving on, we'll need a reference to the rigid body, which is the physics part of the character. This is what is going to make the guy jump. So let's just name it rigid body. Cool. Now in the start, I'm going to grab reference to the rigid body. So let's go with get component rigid body 2D and let's close this up. There we go. That should do the trick. Now, every time I press the jump button, my character should jump, right? So input dot get button down. We've already done this before. Oh, actually we haven't, my bad. So get button down basically checks to when I'm clicking on the jump button, right? So jump here would refer to the space bar. And every time I do click on it, there we go we want it to jump right so we're gonna go ahead and add a force upwards I have to create a new vector and we want the jump force to go upwards so there we go and we're gonna add a force mode 2d and we want it to be an impulse right so that's gonna go ahead and make it an impulse. Awesome, so theoretically this should work too. This is all I'm doing is just adding a upward force every time I press the space bar. Let's go ahead and give it a play. All right, so still able to move and I press space. Oh, he is jumping, but apparently he can't jump too high. Again, it's a complete fat fuck, so I'll have to give him some kind of a jump force. Let's just say 10. 10 should be fair. Let's play. And theoretically, he should jump. There we go. Oh, I realized I made Steve uh, Superman. Okay, well, if I had any kind of understanding of game mechanics I would know that jumping should be allowed only if there is no velocity in the y direction so we're gonna go ahead and add that this basically adds us to jump allows us to jump only once right so unless we hit the floor and completely stop our um, y word acceleration we shouldn't be able to jump that would be l more sensible than what we're doing now but in some games like uh, where you add jumping twice like a double jump the mechanics is slightly different where you where you can we are allowed to jump twice before you hit the ground what am i doing let's just get 0 0.001f which i'm sure you guys understand all right so let's go ahead and play this up and theoretically this should work so I can still move, I can jump, but can I jump again? I'm spamming the spacebar button, but no, I can only jump once. That's perfect. Oh. Oh. Okay, that's nice. So, the reason this is happening is because I didn't uh, stop Steve from rotating in the XY direction, hence he's just rotating all over the place. I can stop that, but uh, I think I kind of like this though. Alright, so moving on. Now... To make the game a little more interesting, let's try and add some kind of shooting mechanic. I think that'd be nice. So let's go to Steve and let's create an empty object. And let's just name it um, shooting point, right? So what this is, is to determine where Steve is going to shoot from. Obviously, Steve doesn't have a gun. So let's just say he shoots from his mouth, right? Sounds about right. Nice. Now Steve will need a weapon, even though he doesn't have one, but he will need a script called, let's just call it weapon. This is basically gonna take care of our shooting force, right? Let's go ahead and load up the script. Uh, 
and there we go now before we move on we also need some kind of a bullet right so let's create some kind of a sprite and <coughs> we're just gonna name the sprite we're just gonna make it look like a knob I think a knob is fine so this is what our bullet looks like at the moment which is which is fine I think let's go ahead and give it a collider oh not exactly a box collider but I will use a circle collider 2d and let's give it a rigid body now obviously we don't want any kind of physics to be acting upon my bullet unless you want some kind of dip in my bullet which I'm not interested in at the moment and let's go ahead and freeze the Z rotation because I only want to move in the XY direction and no rotation whatsoever let's make the collision detection continuous um, I think that's about fine for now right cool okay so I'm go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and drag the sprite in here and let's just rename now I don't want to copy path I just want to rename it to bullet and I can go ahead and delete this bullet from here now why are we doing this I'll show you guys just in a moment so we have a bullet and that's pretty much all we need for now okay so we don't need a start function all we need is an update function and that should do so first of all we'll have to grab a reference for our firepoint let's just go ahead and grab that and the reference is obviously a transform and let's name it firepoint right there we go and we'll also need a reference to our bullet there we go we have a reference to both now every time I let's just say left click so we're gonna again get the input from get button down and fire one what this is going to do is check is check every time I'm clicking on the left click button it should go ahead and uh, not shadow projection but shoot wow okay now before I lose my shit I'm just gonna go ahead and create a shoot function so that lets me implement it thank you VS code and I'm gonna use shoot over here there we go awesome so now we'll need some kind of shoot function all we need in the shoot function is to spawn a bullet every time I'm clicking so in order to spawn I'm gonna use the instantiate and every time we we need to instantiate a bullet of course there we go and where do we want to start from obviously from the fire point position and the rotation will be depending on the fire point dot rotation there we go so every time I left click I should be spawning in a bullet so let's go ahead and give it a try there we go I'm gonna let it play in so if I left click it was supposed to spawn a bullet oh oh of course again if I had any kind of idea on what I was doing I would know that I'll obviously need to drag in a fire point where is my fire point there you go shooting point and we'll need a bullet so let's just go ahead and spawn bullet so now because we didn't uh, drag in the reference we were just spawning absolutely nothing and the controller obviously had no idea where to spawn them so if I left click ooh, fancy isn't that so if I nice I think I might just keep that no of course I'm kidding we'll need to just add some kind of velocity to the bullet but I think that was that was nice that was quite fancy so in order for us in order for our bullet to travel in any kind of direction all we have to do is just add a script to it which will give it some kind of velocity right let's just name it bullet new script uh, we'll name the script bullet and there we go awesome now this is gonna be a very very simple code we don't need anything in it into it all you have to do is just add some kind of velocity to the bullet 
to make it move and not just spawn under me and create some kind of a big building so let's create a speed variable to find out how fast a bullet is going to move let's just start with 20 and we'll also need a reference to our rigid body let's name it rb no no rc rb rb jeez there we go so i mean sometimes vs code just just you know let's just go and add a velocity and we want a velocity towards the right and multiply this by speed that should be all we need awesome so if i save this but now this time before we forget i need a reference to the rigid body so i'm gonna go ahead and drag this rigid body into here so now i have a reference if I play this theoretically, I should be able to shoot. Awesome. I think, I think that's pretty nice. What do you guys think? So, if I jump on top of here. This is nice. I think this just could... This could be a game altogether. You don't need enemies, you don't need stuff, you don't need shit. All you need is this. This is fun. Okay, well, um, thank you guys for watching and sticking around. Hopefully you guys had some kind of fun. And if... I mean, these bullets are just going in slow motion. This is... This is really fun to watch. That's, that's nice. Awesome. So, if you guys enjoyed, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. See you guys next time.